On the evening of October 25th, 1990, a Lancaster, California woman was watching a hard copy television show devoted to a remarkable series of events that had taken place in Belgium over the past year. Beginning in November 1989, many Belgians, including a number of police officers, had reported seeing a huge triangle-shaped UFO with three brilliant lights. When the object appeared late at night on March 30th, 1990, witnesses had called the Air Force radar station at Glones. The operators there had picked up the objects on their screen and notified colleagues at the station at Simmerzak. The UFO had shown up on their screens too. Over the next 55 minutes, radar experts had determined that there was no prosaic explanation, such as false echoes caused by temperature inversions for the image. Two F-16s were sent out to intercept the object, which had shown up on the radars of both planes. It looked, according to a subsequent account in the magazine Paris Match, like a little bee dancing on the scope. Six seconds after the jets achieved a radar lock-on, the object, in one second, accelerated from 175 miles per hour to 1,100 miles per hour, descending 3,000 feet in the same amount of time. During the hard copy program, the California woman happened to glance outside her window. Even as she watched the show, she could see through her window a strange triangle-shaped craft maneuvering in the northern sky. Visible for the next 10 minutes, it carried a bright light at each of its three corners. Sightings of triangular objects go back to at least the 1950s. Over the past two decades, reports of such UFOs have increased markedly and have been logged all over the world. On the evening of August 25th, 1951, Hugh Young, a security guard at Sandia Base, a sensitive atomic installation near Albuquerque, New Mexico, was off duty. He and his wife, Emily, observed a bizarre sight, a huge flying wing, one and a half times the size of a B-36 wingspan. It came in from the north, moving silently at less than a thousand feet and at approximately 300 miles per hour and passed over the witness's trailer home. The Youngs told Air Force investigators that the objects had dark bands running from front to back. Along its trailing edges were six to eight pairs of glowing lights. In the late summer of 1951, sightings of similar flying wings occurred frequently in the southwest. One was photographed on August 30th as it passed over a Lubbock, Texas neighborhood just before midnight. UFOs of this description first appeared in early July 1947 during the wave that followed Kenneth Arnold's classic report of flying saucers on June 24th. In one instance, on July 6th, a Darlington, South Carolina attorney reported seeing 10 or 12 of them flying in, fittingly, V-formation. 
1983 and 1984, thousands of persons in seven densely populated counties in New York and Connecticut observed enormous structured objects. The UFOs were described as giant boomerangs or Vs with lights on the side. In some instances, the structures had bright searchlights sweeping down from the craft's underside. Sometimes they hovered no more than 10 or 20 feet off the ground, and sometimes they moved, so joggers testified, at walking speed. They were also capable of attaining astonishing speeds in seconds. Numerous sightings of such boomerangs have occurred in the mid-1980s to the present in Antelope Valley, California, which encompasses Lancaster, Rosemond, and Palmdale. Locals have reported, besides boomerangs and triangles, fast-moving disks. In one especially spectacular instance, which took place on October 26, 1988. A valley couple observed a slow-moving, immense boomerang over 600 feet in span, they estimated, which soon was joined by an identical structure. Behind the second stretched a formation of nearly 20 smaller disc-shaped craft, other Antelope Valley residents attest that the triangles and boomerangs move at every speed, from walking to ultra-supersonic, sometimes passing from one to the other in seconds. Not all unidentified flying objects are potential alien spacecraft. Some are much stranger. Consider, for example, the strange phenomenon that passed over Biskopsberga, Sweden, early in the 19th century. It was a cloudless afternoon on May 16, 1808, with a hard wind blowing in from the west. The sun over the village suddenly grew dim. At the western horizon, a great number of spherical bodies appeared. They were headed toward the sun and changing from dark brown to black as they got closer to the sun. As they approached, they lost speed but sped up again after passing in front of the sun. They moved in a straight procession across the sky to the eastern horizon. According to Transactions of the Swedish Academy of Sciences, the phenomenon lasted uninterruptedly upwards of two hours, during which time millions of similar bodies continually rose in from the west, one after the other, irregularly, and continued their career in exactly the same manner. Some of the balls fell out of the sky, several landing not far from K.G. Wettermark, secretary of the Swedish Academy of Sciences. Seen just before they hit the ground, they resembled those air bubbles which children use to produce from soap suds by means of a reed. When the spot where such a ball had fallen was immediately after examined, nothing was to be seen but a scarcely perceivable film, as thin and fine as a cobweb, which was still changing color, but soon entirely dried up and vanished. The balls still in the air continued their passage until all disappeared in the east. 